Hi, I'm Vicki Eisenstein with ID8 TV, and today I'm with Mark Strickland of Blue Water Photo. Hi, Mark. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, your photographer? There are all these cool underwater cameras in front of me. Tell me a bit about it and how you got into doing this. Well, I, I think uh, for any of us who are lucky enough to dive or snorkel or spend time in the ocean or in, in the water, for that matter, uh, you know, the very things that attract us to the underwater world has a lot to do with the marine life and the beauty of being underwater and so on. And I think for almost all of us, you know, there's an urge to share that with others and especially with non-diving friends and acquaintances and so on. And, and I think as, as divers, it's kind of our responsibility as well because we are so fortunate to experience this beautiful world that a lot of the, you know, the world never sees firsthand and so on. So to help others appreciate the beauty of it and, and hopefully you want to protect it and so on. So that's kind of a, a, you know, a lot of my motivation. And I think uh, that's true for most underwater photographers to one degree or another. Did you start, um, were you a photographer first or a diver first? Uh, kind of uh, simultaneously in a way. I had uh, just dabbled with photography in a high school intro to photo course kind of thing. And not long after that, I got certified. So I, I think the two came together kind of naturally. And, uh, What's your favorite type of wildlife down there to get pictures of? Well, I'm so glad that I don't have to pick just one because I really enjoy from both ends of the scale, from tiny to huge and everything in between. But uh, uh, I think like almost all divers, you know, it's, it's hard to beat the thrill of being in the company of a, a big animal, especially an intelligent animal like, you know, whales, for instance. That's got to be one of the ultimate experiences underwater, being face to face with, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, say a mother humpback whale and her calf and so on. And, you know, uh, just to see that and experience it is, is incredible, of course, but all the more rewarding if you can bring back some images you know of the experience and so forth but on the other hand i'm also fascinated by many of the tiniest creatures the nudibranchs and little critters and so on and one of the great advantages there is unlike whales that uh, if only you know we could see them all the time but most people that's not you know true uh depending on where you dive and so on but almost anywhere in the world that has a healthy ecosystem underwater it has good macro critters and and uh also, unlike the, the big animals and the wide angle photography, which requires at least reasonable visibility to get good results uh, with the macro, even in terrible visibility, you can get stunning results. So uh, so there's a lot to be said for that as well. And and there's a lot of kind of in between those two extremes as well, just fish portraits and things like that. And uh, there are many different kind of subspecialties within underwater photography. There are those who uh, specialize in shooting shipwrecks, for instance, or ice diving. Uh, not for me. I'm a, a certified tropical wimp. So I I rarely can go in water that's not warm and comfortable if I can help it. How heavy are these cameras usually? Well, uh, above water, you know, it depends on the model. Some of them like these, these big rigs, obviously, uh, you know, do weigh a bit above water. Uh, not unreasonable, but uh, underwater, they can be trimmed out to be perfectly neutral. So they need not weigh anything underwater. So do they do they float then? Well, there's an airspace inside there, so that's part. It provides that offsets the negative buoyancy of, of the the weight of the housing and so on. There are also we don't have them on display right now, but there are floats that are designed to attach to these arms, so you can kind of fine tune your camera rig to be. Some people might prefer it to be a bit negatively buoyant. Others to want it perfectly neutral. And there are photographers who pride themselves in having it so trimmed out that they can just let go of it in mid water and it just hovers right there without holding on to it. So have you ever lost a camera? Uh, thankfully not. Uh, I've had just some scary moments. I, I used to be in the habit of taking two complete systems like this down underwater with me at a time on dive sites that I knew well because it's generally uh, not possible to change lenses underwater. There are exceptions to that, but you kind of have one setup for big stuff for wide angle and a different setup for the tiny critters and so on. And I never wanted to have to choose between the two, so I would park one on the bottom while I use the other. Uh, but I would have problems that uh, people on the boat that I worked on, uh, the guests on board, with thinking they're doing me a favor. They'd, oh, I found your camera rig. I brought it back to the boat for you. It's like, well, thanks. Actually, I was looking for that because I found the nude rink. I wanted to shoot with that. A heart attack, I'm sure. So uh, I actually have a, a little plastic tag made up that I used to leave on whatever camera I left on the bottom. Photographer working nearby. Uh, if found, please leave on bottom. <laughs> and we have a big online presence. So it's bluewaterphotostore.com is, is the website. And we also have a sister website that is all about just dispensing free information for people who want to learn about underwater photography that's called the it's the underwater photography guide but the url the website is uwphotographyguide.com and it's full of great tips and pointers and tutorials and that sort of thing so and we also have a third branch of the company uh, once you've got your underwater photo equipment and the free advice that goes with it it's time to go somewhere and try it out and that is blue water dive travel which is right across the aisle from us but uh, we make arrangements for 
trips for individuals and families and small groups on an individual basis. But we also, where it really ties in with Blue Water Photo and what I do, is we run photo workshops at various places around the world throughout the year. And some of them live aboard, some of them land-based, uh, but there is no charge for the photo instruction. And there's no better way to learn underwater photography, regardless of your experience level from beginners on up to experienced photographers, than to join one of our workshops. Okay, well, we'll have all of that info in the description. Make sure to check out those websites and book your trip for next year. <laughs> and yeah, I'm Vicki Eisenstein with ID8 TV. Thank you so much again, Mark Strickland. It was great to interview you.